Welcome back guys. In this teaching video, I'll be looking at 6.1 probability distributions part two. 6.1 represents chapter six, section one of the Pearson A-level maths applied maths year one textbook. Let's have a look at exam style question one. The discrete random variable X has a probability function, probability capital X equal lowercase x is equal to 0.1 if lowercase x is equal to minus two or minus one, beta if lowercase x is equal to zero or one, and 0.2 if lowercase x is equal to two. Part A, find the value of beta. So we're going to work out the value of beta in part A. We need to use the fact that the sum of probability is equal to 1. So we have that the sum of probability capital X equal lowercase x is equal to 1. So we've got probability capital X is equal minus 2 plus probability capital X is equal minus 1 plus probability capital X is equal 0 plus probability capital X is equal 1 plus probability capital X is equal 2. This must equal 1. Now probability capital X is equal to minus 2, you can see that it will be 0 0.1. Plus probability capital X is equal to minus 1, again you can see that it will be 0 0.1. Plus probability capital X is equal to 0, in this situation we have beta. Plus probability capital X is equal to 1, in this situation we also have beta. Right, plus probability capital X is equal to, in this situation we have 0 0.2. This sum must equal 1. Let's simplify the sum. Beta plus beta is 2 beta, plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.4. This must equal 1. Now we rearrange and make beta the subject. So 2 beta is equal to 1 take away 0 0.4, which is 0 0.6. Therefore, beta is equal to 0 0.6 divided by 2, which is 0 0.3. Let's have a look at part B. Construct a table giving the probability distribution of x. Okay, so here is the table. We have two rows. The first row represents capital X equal lowercase x, and the second row represents probability capital X equal lowercase x. Okay, so these are our two rows. Now lowercase x takes on values minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Probability capital X is equal minus 2 is 0 0.1. Probability capital X is equal minus 1 again is 0 0.1. Probability capital X is equal 0 is beta which is 0 0.3. Probability capital X is equal 1 again it's beta which is 0 0.3. Now, probability capital X is equal to, will therefore be 0 0.2. That there completes part B of the question. Let's have a look at part C. Right, in part C, we want to work out the probability that minus 1 is less than or equal to capital X, which is less than 2. So over here, we are adding three probabilities. Probability X equal minus 1 plus probability x equal 0, plus probability x equal 1. Okay, so we are adding these three probabilities. So from the table, I can see that this will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3. So if we add this together, we get 0 0.7. And that there completes part C of the question. And this exam style question one. Let's move on to exam style question two. Three fair coins are tossed. Part A, write down all the possible outcomes when the three coins are tossed. Right, let's have a look at the scenario when we toss twice. Okay, so here's my sample space diagram. Head, tail, head, tail. So the first possible outcome is two heads. The second one is head tail, the third one is tail head, and the fourth one is tail tail. Now we want to flip the coin three times. So let's have a look at times three. So if we flip it twice, we've got one, two, three, four possible outcomes. So head head, head tail, tail head, and then tail tail. Now we're going to flip it three times. So we're going to combine these combinations with head, tail. So the first possible outcome is head, head, head. Second one is head, head, tail, and so on. 
So we've got head, tail, head, head, tail, tail. Tail, head, head, tail, head, tail. Tail, tail, head, and then tail, tail, tail. So over here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. These are all the possible outcomes when three fair coins are tossed. Moving on to part B of the question. A random variable x is defined as the number of heads when three coins are tossed. So x will take on values 0, 1, 2 or 3. You could have 0 heads, 1 head, 2 heads or 3 heads. So in part B, it says write the probability distribution of x as part 1, a table. So let's have a look at part 1, a table. So here is my probability distribution for x as a table. So we have two rows. The first row represents capital X equal lowercase x. And the second row, ladies and gents, represents probability capital X equal lowercase x. So lowercase x takes on the values 0, 1, 2, 3. Right, so we want to calculate each of these probabilities. So probability capital X equals zero, that means the probability that you get no heads. In other words, you get three tails. So from the sample space diagram, we can see one out of a possible eight outcomes that indicates this probability. So we've got one out of eight. The next probability, capital X equals one, the probability that you get one head. Let's go back to the sample space diagram. We've got one, we've got two, and we've got three. Three situations where we have one head. So this probability is three out of eight. Probability capital X is equal to two. In other words, probability that you get two heads. If we go back to the sample space diagram, so we've got two heads here, one, two heads here, two, and two heads here, three. So three out of a possible eight outcomes. Okay, and so we know that probability capital X equals 3, in other words, probability that you get 3 heads will therefore be 1 out of a possible 8. So that there, ladies and gents, is the probability distribution of X as a table. Part 2. Now in part 2 of the question, we want to express the probability distribution of X as a probability mass function. So this is what we write. Probability capital X equal lowercase x is equal to, right, so we have 1 over 8 if lowercase x is equal to 0 and 3. We have uh, 3 over 8 if lowercase x is equal to 1 and 2. 0 otherwise. So for any other values for lowercase x, we have zero otherwise. That is the icing on the cake. Right, so ladies and gents, that there completes exam style question two. Here is exam style question three. A fair seven-sided spinner is spun until it lands on green or it has been spun five times in total. Find the probability distribution of the random variable S which represents the number of times the spinner is spun. So here is my spinner. The G indicates green and the P indicates purple. Right. S represents the number of times the spinner is spun. So what value does S take on? Well, it takes on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We could have 1 spin, 2 spins, 3 spins, 4 spins, or 5 spins in total. Let's have a look at S equal 1. Now, what does S equal 1 represent? What event is this? Well, this is the event that the spinner lands on a green in the first spin. So the first spin is agreed and we stop. Okay, that was one of the conditions in the question. S equal two. This time we have spun twice. So the first spin must have been a purple. The second spin must have been a green. We stop. S equal three. The spinner is spun three times. This represents the event that the first spin must have been a purple. Second spin must have been a purple, but the third spin must have been a green we stop. S equal 4. This represents the event first spin is a purple, second spin is a purple, third spin is a purple, 
but the fourth spin is a green. So we stop there. Now S equal five has two possible events. This could be the event that all five spins are purples, or we could have had first spin is a purple, second spin is a purple, third spin is a purple, fourth spin is a purple, and the fifth spin is a green. Okay, so we've got S equal one, S equal two, S equal three, S equal four, S equal five. I've explained it on the board. These are the events. Now, probability S equal one is just equal to the probability that the first spin is a green. So that will be four out of a possible seven outcomes. Probability S equal two is the probability that the first spin is a purple and the second spin is a green. So these two events are independent. To work out this probability, we can work out the individual probabilities and multiply them together. So the probability that the first spin is a purple is three out of seven, multiplied by the probability that the second spin is a green is four out of seven. So this gives me 12 out of 49. Probability S equal three, so this is the probability that the first spin is a purple, second spin is a purple, third spin is a green. Again, these three events are independent. So to work out this probability, we can work out the individual probabilities, multiply them together. So the probability that the first spin is a purple is three out of seven, multiplied by the probability that the second spin is a purple, three out of seven, multiplied by the probability that the third spin is a green, four out of seven. So if we multiply this together, we get 36 out of 343. Okay, probability S equal four. Right, so what is probability S equal four? This is the probability that the first spin is a purple, second spin is a purple, third spin is a purple, but the fourth spin is a green. Again, these events are independent. We can work out the individual probabilities and then multiply them together. So the probability that the first spin is a purple, second spin is a purple, and third spin is a purple, respectively, is just three out of seven. So we have three out of seven, multiplied by three out of seven, multiplied by three out of seven, multiplied by the probability that the fourth spin is a green, which is four out of seven. Okay, so I can put this into my calculator. If I put this into my calculator, I get 108 over 2401. Now, if I want to work out probability S equal five, I can just do one minus the sum of this, this, this and this, okay? So one minus four over seven plus 12 over 49 plus 36 over 343 3 plus 108 over 2401, okay? We can do that. So this then gives me 81 out of 2401. So now I can write down the probability distribution of the random variable S as a table. So here is my table. Again, we've got two rows. The first row represents capital S equal lowercase s, and the second row represents probability capital S equal lowercase s. We know that lowercase s takes on the values one, two, three, four, and five. So one, two, three, four, and five. We've calculated each of these probabilities. So the first one, probability S equal one, is just four out of seven. Second one, probability S equal two, that's 12 out of 49. Third one, probability S equal three, that is 36 out of three, four, three. 
Fourth one, probability S equal 4. That's 108 out of 2401. And the final one is probability S equal 5, which is 81 out of 2401. So ladies and gents, that there completes exam style question 3 and this teaching video 6.1 probability distributions part 2. So if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a teaching video.